हेलो चैनल ही है मी मॉर्निंग सर मॉर्निंग कैन यू आर कैन हियर मी यस सर वी कैन क्लियर आई डोंट नो हाउ मेनी राफली हाउ मेनी आर विल बी देयर फॉर द क्लास एट द मोमेंट 24 ऑनली अराउंड 60 सर 60 सर राइट सो वी विल वेट फॉर अ वाइल ओके right i uh, will wait for some time and i'll then i'll start the class this you probably i forgot anyway i i will uh, record it again if you want and uh, send from this point onwards uh right Uh, okay uh right is it okay now yeah you can see the screen right yes sir we can right now this is a handgun uh, that we call uh, a revolver right the uh, only difference is uh, this is the the chamber the revolving chamber which can which is attached with a hinge which can be open sideways and usual revolvers you have six slots right so you can uh, load six cartridges and push it back here and it is ready to fire so that this is also like a semi automatic thing but happened is um, when you fire a shot this chamber revolves revolves either clockwise or other way and the next shot come in line with the chamber so you can uh shot the uh, fire up to six shots this is a picture showing a shoulder gun right so this is the stock and this part is called the butt trigger is here and this is the the barrel and this end we call at the muzzle end and the other end is called as the breech end so at the breech end you can usually open this uh, gun right so like it's a hinge so you can open it like this and load the the weapon uh so some uh, guns have two double barrel so then you can load two shots but uh, most of it has only single barrel so it's a single shot at the at a time and to fire the next second shot you have to open load the gun and uh fire but uh, the semi automatic or automatic weapons what they have done is or the, the appearance is different but different but uh, but basically they have done is the the cartridge case or the belt so probably you have seen this uh, the belt worn by army soldiers which carries multiple uh, shots is fixed to the breech end so when you fire one shot the next one comes in line so until you finish all the shots attached to the belt you can keep firing on right so sometimes some um, uh, high end weapons or automatic weapons like t56 ak47 they can fire about about 10 even 10 20 shots per second right so it depends on the mechanism and the the, the quality and the technique that been used now coming back to uh, coming to ammunition used in now the the smooth bow i will tell you the difference between smooth bow and rifle shot uh, firearms in a while um the smooth bow a different type of ammunition now this is a smooth bow cartridge which now this is all plastic around now it they use such a plastic and cardboard and now this is a longitudinal section and usually you load the gun which descends towards the muzzle end or the end of the uh barrel 
one stresses the bridge in. So here, of course, here they have a something called primer cap, small bubble-like thing. Underneath, they have a small room or cavity, which we call the primer compartment. And at this end, it has a small hole. And this is full of gunpowder or the propellant. And this, this part we call the wads, which separates the gunpowder from the shot. Now, this is a uh, number of uh, multiple equal size lead balls stack into the cartridge. So this is the gunpowder and the, the, the lead balls are separated with the plastic or cardboard, but the part which we call the wads. Right, so what happened when the gun is loaded and the trigger is full, the, the part called hammer in the gun comes and taps on this metal cap. So that pressure is transmitted and this, this, this compartment also has small amount of gunpowder. So due to the tapping and pressure, gunpowder ignites and flame goes through this vent and this suddenly catches fire and it explodes, right? So what happens is now this is when you load this into the gun from this side, this side and even right around and then even from this side, it is covered with the middle of the barrel. Only this side is open. So therefore when it explodes due to the pressure, everything is pushed in this direction. So first to travel is are the lead balls, then the cardboard or plastic particles, then whatever the left behind of the, the gunpowder. Uh, and also depending on the ammunition and gun, even the, the flame might be ejected from the end of the, the muscle end of the gun. Sir? Yes. So is it that that's how they get the tattoo mark, sir? Yeah, I, I will tell you, I uh, will come to that in a while, right? Okay, sir. This is just the basic of uh, the mechanisms of guns and ammunition so that you have the basic understanding and you can relate it well when it, we discuss the features, right? So uh, the shotgun will exit the propel, the lead balls, the wads, and whatever the unburned, partly burned or fully burned uh, gunpowder particles on the muscle lane. When it comes to the rifle, sorry. Right, so I think uh, I have already described this. No need to go through that slide. And now coming to rifle firearms, before coming to the those, I think now it's time to tell you what is the difference between a shotgun or smooth move weapon and a rifle uh, firearm. Now, when you take a rifle, why, why we call it a rifle? Because we, the, the manufacturers has put the thing called rifling into its the inner surface of the barrel, right? Now, if say, for example, now this is the barrel, right? has some thickness, right? Uh, so the inner wall of this barrel, they have cut into a, uh, the, the grooves which spirals around the, the barrel, like right? goes like this round and round from reach into. So it, they might have grooves like three grooves, four grooves, it depends on the manufacturer. So if you get a like cross section, you will have these grooves one, two, three, or four, even five, it, depending on the, the, the manufacturer. It can be clockwise or anti-clockwise. But the only thing is all the grooves go in one direction. You can't have uh, some grooves going clockwise, some grooves uh, turning anti-clockwise. So Either it is all clockwise or all anti uh, clockwise running from the breech end to the uh, muscle end. So if you get a 
cross section at one point it looks like this uh, something like this i think i have a diagram better diagram right because these now these are the grooves right deep part so these are go, called grooves i i will go to the next side i think we, i have a uh, diagram there right uh, I don't know whether it is clear, right? So this is what I want to show that this is the cross section in a surface. This goes like this. Right? So now this is not exactly it like that, but we have a grooves and these elevated parts are called lands. Right? So uh, now when you Put, consider the bullet it can it has to fix between the maximum diameter of the bullet has to be the the length distance between two lands because you can't have something uh, which fits the the grooves but it so it fits within two opposing uh, the lands and this length or this distance is, is referred to as the caliber of the firearm right so when you say nine millimeter caliber, the distance between two lands is nine millimeter. So that is what is we meant as nine millimeter pistol. So it's a caliber is nine millimeter, that distance between two land, two opposing land is nine millimeters, right? So you can have left fist, right fist, and this is the, uh, Cross section. So what happened when even so, sometimes the base of the bullet is something like this. Some parts are projecting, so it fits into the uh, the grooves. And what happened is when so if it fits into the grooves, and when you fire and it moves forward due to the this spiraling effects, bullet is so starts spiraling inside the the barrel. Right. So if you go to the diagram of a bullet, right now this is a, a rifle firearm cartridge. Uh, up to here, it's as same as for shotgun. You have a primer compartment, vent, propellant compartment. Here you have the primer cap, but it doesn't have watts or it doesn't have multiple lead balls. It has a one single mid, uh, lead projectile fixed to this. So when the same mechanism, tapping, igniting, and flame coming, exploding, this part is the bullet, what is we call the bullet, we push towards the muscle line and it is ejected, right? So this bullet, because it's a rifle firearm, when it starts moving from within the barrel, start spiraling because it get caught between the spiraling grooves and even after ejection it's still maintain this spiraling movement right so therefore uh, it starts rotating on his on its own axis why they have invented this because uh, this is called the gyroscopic movement of the bullet it rotating on its own axis, which stabilizes the bullet. So bullet will travel in a straight line for a longer distance. But uh, if you consider this, uh, the lead balls, a smooth ball, the, the, the inner surface of the barrel is kept smooth. So there's no force or rotatory movement in part on this. It's the, these lead balls will just travel forward. So when the energy is high, initially, these lead balls, whatever the number, stays together. But as it loses energy, it starts separating. So at one stage, the whole, say there are nine bullet, uh, uh, lead balls, all nine will uh, separate. But in between this, you will have, a, if you consider the injuries, you have a large hole and sometimes with the scallop pitch, because some uh, lead balls are start, has started to separate, 
they knew we have a larger hole and few satellite Wounds because some have separated, some still stays together, and so uh, because of this, the, the 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 red balls fired from a smooth bow weapon usually spread in a like a cone shape manner, right? Whereas in a bullet, there's only one projectile. It has this gyroscopic movement, so it stays in a uh, law uh, lengthy straight line for a longer period. So that is the difference between uh, the, the uh, firearm, the rifle firearm and smoothbow firearms and the cartridges. So the rifle is more powerful and it carries a bullet for a longer distance than a lead balls in a smoothbow weapon. So when it comes to the ballistics, how the bullets or the pellets, as we call, ejected from a gun, is have behave, behave. There are three areas. Uh, one is internal ballistics, where how it behaves within the barrel. Then you have the external ballistic. It's from time of discharge until it reaches the target. So how it be behave in air. Then you have the terminal ballistics, what we usually see as forensic pathologists, movements or behavior within the target. So basically these two areas are dealt by the government analysts or ballistic expert. But wound ballistics usually we deal as experts. Right? So it's a combination of two. So even when we come to courts, we never, uh, unless we are forced or we are asked to give some explanation, we don't talk about internal or external ballistics. But provided that the judge wants some clarification, lawyers won't, right? we all we can always give some basic clarification about the internal ballistics and external ballistics. But if you want more expert opinion, it has to be a forensic scientist. In a case, in our case, it's someone uh, expert from the government analyst department. Right. Uh, then, uh, so I think I have already told you about the internal ballistics. There's nothing much. Right. The smooth bow weapon, the shot simply travels the length of the barrel that way. But in the rifle, the, this rifling impasse are rotational movements which is called the gyroscopic movement and bullet starts spinning around its own axis. And this stabilizes the bullet and make it more steady and it travels in a straight line for a longer distance. The external ballistics also, I, now I have already told you, shotguns, these lead balls, if it depends on the cartridge type you use, sometimes you can have a nine lead balls, 12 lead balls, sometimes multiple, sometimes even 200. So usually at the beginning, they stay together. At, say, at some distance, it looks like this because some uh, lead balls start separating. Then you have, as I told you earlier, one large hole and few separated satellite pellets or injuries, then uh, it's totally separate. So this like a energy, uh, as the energy loss, shots start to separate and it's like a cone, like something like this. So uh, the appearance of the, the wound sometimes helps you to give idea, formulate or opinion about the uh, the distance, right? So if you see this type of injury, it means it's uh, almost the beginning of the uh, pathway and he, here it comes somewhere here, here, and this is totally separate. So if you see uh, a totally separated shot, you say it's a distant shot. If you see one single hole, it's a close range shot. And these are intermediate. But rifle, doesn't have this appearance because it has only one projectile. 
Now, it, due to this gyroscopic spin, bullet travel for a greater distance. As it reaches the end, now whatever the energy, high energy it has, it continues to lose it. So initially, the bullet will travel nose forward. And as it loses energy towards the end of its trajectory, now it starts to wobble. The base goes up, down, up, down, right? gradually inclination increases and at one point at the very end it might even topple base forward right so again the the injuries we see on the skin depends on here right if shot at these ranges has a single nice hole but at these ranges it might not be a perfect circular hole it may be like oval shape or even uh, there's a possibility that the, the the bullet hits sideways, which so may have a, like a rectangular cylindrical uh, shape uh, wound or even sometimes base forward. So that is again an indication of the range in most instances. Right. Then the terminal ballistics, the wound, how the wounds are caused. Uh, now everything depends on the kinetic energy the bullet possesses. I will consider the bullet for to describe the terminal ballistics, but, but same thing can be applied to the, the shotgun uh, lead balls as well. Now, so everything depends the, the features of the internal wounds and the, the severity, everything depends on how much energy the bullet possesses at the time of entry to the target or human body. So from physics, you know that kinetic energy is equal to weight square of the velocity divided by uh, the gravity, right? So with the, the mass velocity squared divided by two, right? So we'll understand if you double the weight of a bullet, it will double the kinetic energy. If you double the velocity, it will quadruple because this is V squared, right? So when the manufacturers also consider this, so rather than increasing the weight, this, which has a limit depending on the size of the barrel, it's easy and more effective to uh, increase the velocity. You can have a better propellant of other mechanisms. So you increase the the velocity. If you double the velocity, velocity it quadruple the kinetic energy and will be more cause more damage, right? So, uh, so amount of tissue destruction when it's into the body is proportionate to the amount of kinetic energy lost during the period of travels in the tissue, right? So, if say this is the body and say a bullet enters at high speed and exit at high speed, right? Say it enters at 100 meters per second speed, velocity, and exit at 99 meters per second. So only one meter per second energy being lost. So therefore, in that case, the amount of actual tissue dam destruction may be little less. But if it enters at 100 meters per second velocity and stops within the tissue, that means all the kinetic energy possessed by the bullet is released to the, the surrounding tissue causing more damage, right? So if you make a bullet to stop within the target, it will cause more damage. So therefore, sometimes some manufacturers use this knowledge to manufacture more damaging, more, more destructive bullets. I will come to that in a little while. Right, so as the bullet travels through the tissue, it crushes and shreds the tissues around, right? So now, which cause result in permanent cavity. Like say, if you have a nine millimeter bullet, when it travels, it exits, it exits, 
it will cause a track or permanent cavity roughly of about 9 millimeter or 1 centimeter. So that is the permanent cavity. You cannot change because it's the because due to the, the size of the bullet. Right? So, but it is a very maybe small tract. But fortunately, unfortunate or unfortunate, we have a, this theory called temporary cavitation. Because these are we are talking about high speed projectiles traveling through the uh, tissue, which sometimes, not sometimes, they always spread the sound wave radially outwards. So if this is the bullet, it, spend, it will send a sound wave around it where the diameter of this sound wave or the, this wave is sometimes sometimes about 12 times the size of the, the bullet. So if you say 9 millimeter bullet, it's roughly we say 1 centimeter. So that the permanent track, the diameter will be one centimeter, but this temporary cavitation, which pushed tissues outwards for a moment, for a few milliseconds, and which then collapse, right? So this lasts about five to 10 milliseconds, and the effect about 12, 12 times. So the permanent cavitation effect is, could be diameter will be 12 centimeter. Right? So, it, because it has alternating positive and negative pressure spread outwards, so it expands, then collapse. And for naked eye, it's very, very difficult to see, as sometimes you don't see, unless you see small hemorrhages or bleeding. Right? So, what I want to get through is, uh, there may be a situation, for example, uh, the bullet traveling has penetrated the body traveling close to the heart, for example. It has not gone through the heart, but very close to the heart, right? So then you don't see any naked eye changes, naked eye injuries to the heart because the permanent tract is somewhat away. But the heart comes within this 12 centimeters, the temporary cavity. So therefore the heart can has, have microscopical or which can be seen under the, the microscope changes or damages, right? So therefore, when you are dealing with a case, uh, it is doesn't mean that it, just because we have, don't see uh, naked eye changes in the heart, injuries in the heart, you cannot exclude involvement of heart, right? And this may even enough to kill the person because it has caused damage at the molecular level because the heart has fallen in within the temporary cavity, the 12 centimeter diameter thing. So therefore, it is not necessary for you to see the actual, the naked eye damage to say that this organ is involved, right? So if you do microscopy, you will see more uh, evidence, get more evidence of uh, damage, but it's not necessarily for, to give opinion because these are proven facts, right? So if you have a permanent track just beside the heart, I can always say the heart is definitely coming through, coming within the temporary cavitation effect. So therefore, heart can involve and patient could die, right? So that you have to remember when you are dealing with cases, right? Even you are arguing for or against the facts given. Now, so therefore the loss of energy of a bullet within the target is an important uh, factor which determine the, uh, the amount of destruction. So, amount, so therefore one basic thing is the kind of energy possessed by the bullet. Angle of yaw. Now this is the yawing what I told that you said the I said that um, bullet might start swaying sideways. So this movement is called yawing, right? Not yawning. This is called yawing. Uh, y a w i n g. 
the the movement of this right so if the angle of your is large the amount of uh, now it's it has less energy for therefore it will cause less damage so therefore some features of the bullet which determines or affect the severity of the injuries is one is the size of the bullet larger the bullet more the destruction then the construction of a jacket now i told you that, that the bullet is comprising of a lead lead is easily deformable when it hits a target even the human body so therefore if it deforms then the forward movement will be reduced so what sometimes what the manufacturers have done is now this is the this is the bullet which has a lead core then they have put a jacket copper nickel jacket around the uh, around the uh, lead core right so they have a construction of a jacket and you have fully full jacket fully jacketed partial jacket right but again this full jacketed and uh, partially jacketed bullets it's a misnomer uh, full jacket means as i shown here let go and you cover the sides and the tip not the base but uh, what is meant by a partial jacket you have the core you cover side base base not the tip only difference is so that's why i said this is a misnomer but uh, only difference is when it hits the target in a partial uh, jacketed bullet because jacket stops here this is let go uh, is exposed sometimes it is jacket is uh, evolves or removed from this point and jacket goes away which doesn't happen which will not happen in a fully jacketed because everything is covered so that so that's the basic basic difference then uh, to cause more damage to make energy uh, release more energy is released to surrounding manufacturers have this special uh, bullets like expanding bullets so now this is like a uh, conical thing and when it enters or hits this end starts expanding right so it's no longer it is sharp or pointed so it stops or we have a soft nose bullet and this is they have made very soft on hitting the target it deformed and the bullet stops within the target or is we have x hollow point uh, again uh, there's a hollow cavity again which ha what happened is it uh, i mean uh, shape is uh gone so therefore uh, deform and so therefore uh, it stops and uh, in addition to this they have something called exploding bullets as well uh, sorry uh, this is not writing properly but they have the manufacturer has a small compartment full of gunpowder here so when it hits the target this part explodes and make the bullet to stop within the target so the manufacturer Just always try to manufacture bullets which cause a maximal damage for different uh, various various reasons, right? So the 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 amount of damage done depends on the amount of energy released to the body. Amount of energy released to the body depends on the velocity or kinetic energy of the bullet. We at the time of it enters and how much is lost and also some some degree depending the size of the bullet and also the type of the construction types whether it is jacketed expanding bullets soft nose bullets so there are several factors right so the basically speaking uh, when you are formulating opinion in a complex and uh, manner i do have to uh, consider all these things as well so when we deal with a uh, wound we might not be aware about the ty exact type of the the bullet 
right so therefore our formulation is based 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 most of the cases based on thinking that this is a normal bullet we don't know whether it expanding soft nose or hollow point but the jacketed non jacketed thing we might have an answer because uh, uh, most of the time uh, you know that you, they use partial jacket or fully jacketed uh, bullets but the expander they say expanding bullet soft nose bullet we might not know what the exact type of the bullet but on the other hand if something like special type of bullets are used we will not see a characteristic trigger firearm entry as well right so uh, two way so sometimes we do, will not we have a typical wound but we don't know what type exactly the bullet is whether it is soft nose or something like on the other hand sometimes we will see a again a typical different wound because the bullet has expanded the explode or something but still we might not uh, be aware about the exactly what the uh, type of the bullet is uh, but anyway if the bullet is has stopped within the target it is our duty to locate and retreat so therefore one of the essential investigation which we have to do prior to start in this section is to take an x ray usually depending on the case you might even get full body x ray in two direction now if uh, like uh, say for example if this is the body you can take direction from front to back and also sideways so you need x rays taken in two uh, two different direction right angle to each other because it will uh, tell you exactly where the bullet lies for example now if you just a second uh, let me erase this thing right so say if you take a x ray two x rays so we say this is the chest and so you see a bullet taken in a x ray from front to back now say this is the midline then you will be able to say whether it is on left side or right side but you can basically say whether it is front or at the back because then you consider the same x ray taken in the same area from side base right then you can say difficult say whether it is right or left but you can say judge whether it is at front or back right so if you use to combine the two you roughly know at around which area the bullet lies and where you should look for and uh, whenever we have a bullet stuck in the body or target we are supposed to find it and retrieve because it's very very important for the further investigation and we usually retrieve it hand it over to the police which is usually sent to the terminal analyst department so then it is it will make their work as easy as well because now we they have the bullet recovered from the body and if they get a suspicious or suspected gun and ammunition they can easily compare and say whether it is the same gun whether it is the same ammunition so uh, retrieval of bullet when it is stuck in the target is i would say mandatory you have to find it somehow now this is what i told you earlier about the permanent cavity and temporary cavity so this is the permanent cavity and this is the temporary cavity which just will be there for a few milliseconds and the next one now so the uh, like a same thing right so any organ which lies comes to lies with between the temporary cavity could be damaged without any naked eye changes even now when you get a so classification of gunshot wounds now can say entrance and exit whether the it's uh, the bullet has enter or exit then the range contact 
something called near contact, which is not very important for you to know. Close range, intermediate, and distance. Then, whether we can say whether it is rifle firearm injury or injury caused by a smooth bow weapon. Right? So, if you know to address these areas, most of the problems with regard to the case is solved because we know what are the entries, what are the exit, right? So basically, when you say you have two entries, you know at least two shots being fired. Uh, if you know that the entry is in front and exit is back, you know the gun has been fired from the front of the victim, right? Uh, only thing is that we have to be careful if, if it is a smooth bow with one shot, two might have multiple holes. So that is the area that we have to be a little bit careful. And uh, particularly when you are taking the history to find out whether actually what is the suspicious suspected firearm, whether it's a rifle or a, the, a shotgun. Uh, again, the contact, near contact, low strain, intermediate, we decide depending on the features of the firearm injuries we see. So again, to determine this, it's basically all these features uh, are related to the entrance wound, right? Because exit wound, you, you, are, you cannot or you don't talk about a range, right? So these are all feet, depends, uh, opinion depends on the features you find in and around the entrance Again, some of the features you see at the uh, entry will help you to say whether it is a smooth bow or rifle firearm as well. And uh, anyway, this is not an area that we could always comment, right? Sometimes we might not be able to say whether it is rifle or firearm, uh, rifle firearm or smooth bow. So it's okay to leave that out, but whenever possible, should uh, give some opinion about that as well. Now, what are the features that would support to find or help you to find or determine the entrance? One thing is an in inverted margin. So as you know, that if this is the body and something going in, the margin, marginal tissues will be usually drawn into the body. And then you have this called abraded margin or the abrasion collar. Uh, what happens is when the, the bullet enters, right? Now this if this is the skin, right? And if this is the bullet. Usually for a moment, for a few milliseconds, before it pierces the 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 skin indents inwards with the bullet and usually so therefore this area the skin wraps around the the bullet so it rubs against the surface of the bullet and it gets abraded then it pierces right so if when it comes back to normal it will it will it shows something like this this is the the defect and you see abrasion around right so the important here is when you see this abrasion collar, it's almost always used occurs with a rifle firearm injury because it's due to the shape of the bullet. Uh, a single pellet, the lead ball will not cause this because the lead ball is a spherical thing. But this is a conical. So when you see the abrasion collar, it's almost always uh, a rifle firearm. I will not say it is always because in atypical rare situation, even there's a possibility or recorded things that even a lead ball, spherical lead balls has caused something similar to abrasion, abrasion collar. And especially if this lead ball has been a little bit uh, deformed. And the next thing that you can determine is, right, if you have this, the defect here and the, the abrasion collar right around. This is this indicates that this is a perpendicular shot. If it is an angle shot, right? Angle shot, you have defect, and the 
abrasion collar, something like that. On this side, the abrasion collar with this more, this side is. So that means the bullet has come from this side. If it is, it comes from this side, should be the other way. So this depends on the angle of the bullet and how much skin wraps around. So technically, you would understand if the skin is like this and the bullet is coming from this way, when it enters, more skin will wrap around this side of the bullet than this side. So that is why it is, if it is perpendicular, it will be same. So this will help you to even to say that it is a rifle firearm, most likely to be a firearm, a rifle firearm, and also something about the, the direction. Uh, then there's something called dirt, dirt ring and bullet pipe. Uh, it depends on the whatever the dirt particles, or sometimes it may be uh, something oil, grease, which has been used to uh, clean the inside of the barrel of the gun, which is transmitted onto the bullet. And when it enters, uh, it get wiped off onto the skin. So it's a, like a dirt particle or oil grease, what we call as a bullet wipe, something, uh, uh, whatever the things on the bullet surface being wiped onto the, uh, the skin. Then fibers, like sometimes when a person is wearing clothes, fibers of the cloth fibers, again as the inverted edge will be pushed into the, the tissues. Um, and also consider the size of the defect. Usually the entry wound diameter is slightly less than the uh, diameter of the bullet. So if basically if you say nine millimeter bullets, the defect would be maybe I would say eight millimeter because the, as it enters the skin is stretched so therefore, and when it comes back to normal, the, uh, the diameter appears to be little less than the diameter of the... Then the burning, uh, someone asked me earlier, burning, blackening and tattooing. Now I told you that from the muscle length, flame might eject, right? So <coughs> if the target is close enough, uh, close enough uh, that you burn the skin around, right? So now this, this is the muscle lane, flame would come in, right? Rough, they say roughly about six inches, right? It's a right, uh, very rough guy. So if the target is within this, the car coming in contact with the flame, it burns. Then the blackening is due to the suit, whatever the fully burned uh, gunpowder, right, which travels to about, they say about 12 inches in a normal weapon. So, and then the tattooing is due to unburned or partially burned gunpowder particles because they, the gunpowder particles, when it hits on the skin, it causes small abrasion. So, uh, around the entry, you might see a area burn area suit is deposited, area where was small abrasion. So this is burning, blackening, and the other one is tattooing. So uh, the, this, the blackening where the suit is deposited on the skin, you if you get a wet cloth, you can just wipe it off. But tattooing is an injury, so you cannot wipe it off. Burning is an injury, you cannot wipe it off, right? So this is it's very important that if you see all three or at least one or two of these features that around a wound, that means it has to be a, an entry wound, not an exit wound, because there's no way that these things would, uh, sub, uh, the exit wound, the skin around the exit would be subjected to uh, this. Then the thing called internal braving, I will uh, describe it a little later. The muscle imprint, sometimes contact range shot, where the, the muscle end is kept tightly on the, 
target and pressed. So that end of the muscle will sometimes cause a uh, circular abrasion or contusion, which we call as a muscle impingement. So if you see a muscle impingement around the entry, that means it is a contact wound. And you might not see any of this burning, blackening, and tattooing in a case of tight contact because the flame, everything goes into the uh, tissue because the barrel is firmly in contact with the tissue. So there's no way that it could uh, go sideways. And high carbon monoxide amount around the, the tissues uh, at the entry wound because the the burn, the, the, these fumes and gas contains a lot of carbon monoxide. So one way of uh, differentiating uh, an entry wound and exit wound is might be assessing the carbon monoxide level within the tissue, right? So there was, uh, it has to be low or abs even absent, most cases at the, around the exit wound. Right. So general features of the exit wound usually averted because the edges because bullet is going out. And you will have a, not have an abrasion collar, uh, but I will tell you something about this short exit in a while. It's a separate, uh, special situation. So you usually don't have an abrasion collar and usually larger wound than the entrance wound or sometimes larger than the diameter of the uh, bullet or the projectile. And sometimes bony fragments being forced out through the skin because uh, while traveling within the body, it might hit bone and bone particles, small particles might be uh, pushed out or sucked out and might come out from the exit wound as well. So these, so these two features and I have just finished describing will help you to identify the entry wounds and the exit wounds. So when you should suspect that, uh, gunshot injuries, right? So when a suspected case of gunshot injuries is found, first, it's always better first to determine whether they are gunshot injuries or not, right? So very likely that if you see a circular shape penetrating injuries are more likely to be gunshot injuries than anything else. But don't forget, we might have even stab wounds or perforating wounds caused by pointed cylindrical weapons or object, which appears same. Uh, but uh, when you get the statistic, if when you see a circular shape penetrating wound, it's almost always a gunshot. And always you have to exclude gunshot injuries whenever you see uh, that type of injuries, except in the exceptional cases. And then if it is you think it's a gunshot injury, then first thing is to uh, differentiate the entrance and exit wound, which will give you roughly a number of shot and the direction. So this will give you a baseline to start your investigation further. Right. So when you find a circular perforating penetrating wound, right, as I told you, step could occur, but they are less likely than the gunshot injuries. Right? So therefore, you when you see come across that type of injuries, always look for other characteristic features of firearm injuries. I bet as I told you, burning, blackening, tattooing, abrasion, collar, so bullet wipe, so on. So this is again uh, just a repetition of what I have told you earlier. The gun is fired, jet of flame, they say up to six inches, then a cloud of gas burning an unburned grain of gunpowder, soot, and even vaporized metal from the bullet. So the, all these could either deposited on the skin or cause injuries to skin or carried into the target. So I think again, I have already told you this burning is due to flame, blackening is to deposition of partly burned or burned gunpowder 
tattooing are small abrasion caused by gunpowder particles right so if one or more of this bbt b b t is present it is a gunshot wound and it is an entry so, so that is the basic decisions or thing that you can in, interpret and whenever see you abrasion collar if you are almost always dealing with a bullet injury because this bbt is common for shotgun smooth bow weapons and rifle firearms but when you see abrasion collar it's almost always a rifle weapon that has been used so something about the range of fire contact near contact that is a distance from the weapon to the target contact near contact close contact intermediate range and distant wound so i don't have to say what is meant by contact as i told you earlier weapon is firmly in contact with the target near contact some authors use this classification and say that it is the distance between the muscle length of the weapon and through the target is less than one centimeter right so it's almost like it falls on close contact range but some authors like to describe it as a separate topic which is not necessary so close intermediate and distance now basically what we do is we decide on the features we see not we are not talking about uh, exact distance or range of distance because it can depend on the type of the weapon and the type of ammunition right so if we see all features burning blackening and tattooing all we classify it as a close range shot but if you see only burning and tattooing sorry blackening and tattooing or only tattooing we classify it as an intermediate shot and if you don't see any of this not uh, sorry my pen has some problem bpt if, if you don't see anything right and then we classify it as a distance wound that is from our expertise but when it goes to the government analyst department with regard to the weapon and ammunition they will be able to give a different uh, looking at a different perspective and uh, give opinion right but we based this classification of range depending on the features seen at the entry point right so we can have a hard or loose contact hard in the sense is at even at the moment of firing and ejection it remains contact so everything goes in right so everything goes in and you will have a muscle imprint as well and sometimes uh, then the the loose contact muscle is in contact but at the moment of ejection it recoils back so there are mere small gap uh, and you might see uh, the flame gas everything uh, spreading outwards uh from the get gap so we will see this burning blackening and tattooing on the skin in a loose contact but sometimes a part of it goes into the tissues as well so near contact or close range i would say some authors say near contact is less than 10 mm and if you have this these features burning blackening tattooing or seared margin and even if you see examine if if you don't see this you still cannot jump into a conclusion saying that it is not a close range shot particularly if the the victim was wearing clothes all these effect may be retained on the clothes or if there are some intervening object uh, the victim was shot through a glass particularly the blackening and blackening or the position of uh, suit will be retained on this intermediate object so when you don't see burning blackening and tattooing it indicates that it is likely to be a distant shot but provided that you exclude the possibilities of clothes 
and intermediate any other intermediate objects coming in between the gun and the target which you find that will you will defer your opinion you will not say it is not a close range shot still can be a close range shot but only thing is the intervening object has retained the effect of the the flame gases and also the gunpowder right so this is uh, an injury which showed which shows seared margin or burn margin this is the blackening where the gunpowder is deposited and these are called tattooing small abrasion here and there right it is called tattooing so intermediate range as i told you no burning is seen but you will see blackening and tattooing both or only tattooing and if you don't see if anything usually we classify it as a distance shot provided that as i told you earlier effects of uh, effects of uh, intermediate object retaining the the gas or whatever right so question do the features differ according to the type of the gun rifle or smooth bore right now smooth bore weapons cause a larger wound than rifle because we are talking about multiple lead balls moving together so usually cause a larger hole than the bullet and usually the burning blackening and tattooing effect is more pronounced in smooth bow weapon than uh, rifle firearm and it's also depend on the type of the ammunition and the uh, the gun right so you will if you put gunpowder you will see less tattooing and uh, blackening right now in the smooth bow weapon i think i have already told you the shape and features of the wound varies depending on the distance between the weapon and the target right it progress will larger you, initially you will see single hole then you see a rat hole or scalloped edge then you see a satellite wound as i told you one, one single and small peripheral wound then also separation total separation of pellets right so which you can give a rough idea about what the distance and say whether it at least say close intermediate or distance then comes to special situation of rifle firearms and bullet ricochet bullet ricochet in the sense the bullet travels in a direction hits something change the direction Sorry. right so it can be external ricochet the bullet changing the direction outside the target say i am in the room and someone comes through the uh, the door and shot me the bullet can stuck the table strike the table change the direction and comes and hit so therefore sometimes the classical typical features might not be seen because the flame uh, flame gases everything goes in a different direction initially but the bullet change so sometimes gas flame will not reach the target because the, the weapon is detected somewhere else so it can be so um, that is external ricochet outside the body but similarly it can ricochet or turn uh, change the direction within the body as well specifically if it's something hard like bone and this is common to happen somewhat common in the within the head or skull than the the rest of the body because skull you know that's like a spear right so it can so now if this is the skull right bullet going here rather than it can exit there but at the same time hitting the bone it can change the direction and go exit somewhere else and there are recorded cases reported cases where the bullet goes hits turn back 80 degrees 
180 degrees and going out from the same pole, right? So we will have only one pole in the skull with the without the bullet inside, or it could change the direction and go somewhere else, right? So we have to be cautious about that. Uh, because just by going where the entry wound and exit wound will not give you the direction of the fire. Then the bone injuries, I'm again talking, I think I will go to the, the slides which will, right? So the ricochet bullet depends on where it hits and how it changes its course, right? So I think uh, I have already told you about this, then the, the beveling, when it hits the bone, usually this phenomena is seen in the thick. The bone has some thickness. So as now you, I told you that as the bullet travels, it's uh, spread energy, right? Loses energy. So if you just think that now this is a somewhat enlarged diagram I'm drawing. If this is the bone, right? Now this is the bone. Say bullet comes here, enter, exit, right? So as it enter now, this is at high speed. This is somewhat low speed, right? So it start releasing the energy. Here it loses less energy. <coughs> Sorry. As it moves forward, more energy is lost, right? So the spread of energy is lost is less like this, like, like a cone spray. Bullet will go this way, right? So as due to this effect, there has been less, more bone damage here than here, right? Now this is something like a permanent cavity and uh, temporary cavity, but not the, the same, but now bullet will go through, right? There will be a permanent cavity, permanent defect in the bone equal to the size of the bullet. Here, of course, it's additional loss. So what happened here, now the bone loss is like, if you look from this side, you will see a very clean margin, clear margin hole, right? So my pain is not writing. But if you, now this is pain, if you, you are looking from outside. If you look from inside, you will see this plus some additional bone loss around, which is not total loss, partial bone loss, right? So if you see, come to this end, if you see it from the inside, right? Now this is, uh, so, sorry, I'm talking about uh, only one wall, right? So if you see from this side, it will be clear. Sorry for, I made a mistake, right? This is one wall I'm talking about. If you see from this side, you see the, the defect plus the additional loss. Now, say this is one side. Now there is a skull. Say bullet goes from the other side of the skull, right? Same thing happened but the direction is different, right? So if you see from the inside of the skull, you will have this appearance. If you see from the outside, you will have this appearance, right? So this effect and this damage is called the beveling, right? So a phenomena which is usually seen in bones with some sort of thickness, right? So with regard to the skull, Right, so this is say this is the left side of the head. This is the right side of the head. If you see this beveling effect on the inner table, that shows says that this is the entry wound. If you see this beveling on the outer surface, it means that it is the exit. Right, clear. So if you see internal or inner beveling on the skull on one side, that means it's the entry. If you see external beveling or outer beveling on somewhere, means that it is the exit. So this is a very characteristic feature, very helpful feature for you to determine 
what the entry wound is, what the exit wound is. Right, so this is a, just a same diagram showing, right? So you see the conical shape of bone loss, conical shape of bone loss, bullet is going from here to here, right? If you see from this side, you will see something like this. If you see from this side, you see something like this. Here, if you see from inside, something like here and Right, so this is, if you see a beveling in, on the internal surface, it's the entrance. Beveling on the outer surface, it is the exit. Right, so that is a very characteristic or classical feature that we see in bone injuries caused by particularly bullets. Right, uh, most of the cases, pellets, sometimes they don't penetrate but even penetrate a single ball penetration, you will not see this type of uh, bone loss because it's a spear or ball that enters, not a cone shaped bullet. Right? So this is the beveling shown on the uh, skull. Uh, so therefore, now I've already told you, I don't think that you have to, I have to go through this slide. Uh, bullet wipe. I have told you what is meant by bullet by whatever the material deposited on the, the surface of the bullet getting onto the skin as it enters. Uh, back spatter is I think uh, usually happen when the uh, it's a contact wound because I told you that everything gas everything goes inside without escaping into the air. So uh, what happened is say this is the bone and again this is mainly happen on the face, skull, and say this is the skin and the bullet weapon is kept tightly on the skin and fired. All the gas goes in, but the bullet will go in and uh, gas part might go in, but most of it get collected for momentarily collected between the skin and the bone, right? So this is the bone. So what happened, it's momentarily cause a gas bubble and ruptures. So when ruptures, now this is the gun is here. It, the blood the tissues will be thrown backwards. Depositing on the gun barrel or if it's a small, sorry, small weapon, it may be um, even the handle and sometimes even on the hand per, for the, the person holding the gun. Right, so finding the back spatter is important in many cases. One thing is if you find blood or tissue on the weapon or inside the barrel, uh, you can compare it with the victim's tissue and blood and say and confirm and say this is the weapon that has been used to kill this person. If you find uh, this blood and tissue on the accused suspect's hand, can match and tell. The blood on the tissue on the uh, suspect hands matches with the victims. So that means he is the one who has been holding the gun at the time of firing. And sometimes it will help you to say whether it is a suicide or not to find the victim's hand uh, contaminated with blood and tissue, his own blood and tissue because he is the one who has kept Hold, was holding the gun at the time of firing. So the back spatter is an important thing where you can connect the, the victim to the weapon, connect the victim to the suspect or weapon to the suspect and also say whether it is someone else or it was a self-inflicted injury. Not, I mean, you will not see all the time, but when the back spatter, and if you get a chance to analyze that side of uh, that type of inference, you can come right now. This is just to show the effect of intermediate object retaining. So, this person was hit, uh, fired through the glass, and all the, the gas, suit, everything retained on the glass itself. And something about the atypical gunshot wounds, stellate shape, 
due to this gas bubble formation and rupturing in the contact wound over the especially the face and the skull uh, so you can get a stellate shape entry and when you say stellate see a stellate shape entry on the head it's usually denotes a contact wound because that is the mechanism that wound cause right so irregular shape injuries bullet striking sideways short exit where a person is lying against a hard surface bullet comes from this side and exit so as it exit i told you the skin is skin is damaged and project outwards hitting against the hard surface and cause uh, abrasion around the irregular abrasion around the exit so seeing a short exit some people might confuse it with the entry wound think that it is a abrasion collar but if you uh, carefully analyze it uh, you might say no this is not the abrasion collar this is a short exit so in this case a person may have been standing or sleeping against a hard surface at the time of firing right so you might be able to correlate that fact as well and you can have re entry wound like say sorry it's not right improperly it can enter from side of the arm exit and re enter the chest right so all the features of entry wounds retain here this is also a entry but since it being a re entry you will not see burn in black in tattoo in and sometimes even uh temptation collar so these are atypical uh gunshot wounds and whenever you see that you should be careful and consider a lot of things before analyzing and coming into a conclusion right or well, this is a classic stellate shape entry contact entry over the forehead again showing the tattooing and the entry over the forehead and this is something with the smooth barrel weapon smooth bow weapon uh because i this doesn't have a uh, enough energy to keep the lead balls together for a longer distance but the manufacturers have invented something like a barrel which gradually narrows from reach end to uh muscle length so this is is that defect is called choking a diameter at reach end is more than the Right, so it like something narrowing. So this effect is called choking, and if it was a whole length, it was full choke. Only the latter half, half choke, latter quarter, quarter choke, you know, or sometimes it may be even end. Only the end is having this feature, which keeps the lead balls together for a longer distance. So sometimes, so they. the opinion you have to consider it now just to uh we will you a story where i gave evidence based on someone else's report because he was abroad uh it was a case where uh, they have used a smooth bow uh, shotgun and the the jm mohod who has examined has described injuries which matches a distance around this we'll say 10 feet because the separation uh, everything matches to a uh, uh, feet uh, the discharge around 10 feet but there is a eye witness saying that he was at this place the 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 accused which is comparable for about 20 to 25 feet right so when giving evidence i said uh, to the judge i know that this appearance matches with a distance around say 10 to 15 uh so that is the opinion i get so when there is cross examination defense counsel they have the weapon there right weapon there. i told the judge but it could vary depending on the judge the, the the gun because there are something called choking if 
it is a barrel choking barrel uh, the the estimate our estimate of 10 to 15 feet based on the uh, based on the features of the injury might not be correct because if the choking the, the, the barrel is choking that the same appearance could happen in a greater at a greater distance so i have already given that opinion or give that fact to the courts then the defense lawyer when the cross examined he wanted me to examine the weapon i said no i am not an expert on firearms so you have to get a someone from the government department to uh, get the opinion then for the second time he said to examine I, again i refuse then third time also he requested then the judge said uh, judge told me because doctor you seem to have a good knowledge fair knowledge about the firearm so since defense lawyer is suggesting why don't you just have a look right so i took the gun and the first thing i noticed was the gun was the barrel was choking right so i said my lord now this is the feature i told you this kit now you don't need a expert to say that the beach end is wider than the muscle end it appears and everybody can see so i said this is the fit so this means though we say 10 to 15 uh, feet looking at only looking at the injuries if this sort of choking same thing could this particular level this weapon it, the range could be much more maybe so it might match right so actually at, that was the end of cross examination because defense lawyer did not ask any question uh, after that because he knew that the case is lost because uh, I refuses refused twice but then I had to examine the gun at the request of the judge so don't uh, ask some question you have to think before cross-examining uh, because uh, to see the choking you don't need an expert right uh, so therefore so you have to be careful when you're dealing with uh, i mean either examination or cross-cross examination because uh, the wording of the question the things that you want to uh, ask might go against you as well then you have this zone of shotgun where they have cut the barrel short to conceal the gun so the spread will be early and uh, different from a typical appearance and then homemade guns like galkatas they are crude and usually muscle loaded they put the lead balls it's gunpowder through the muscle and then uh, compress into a shot so they have like somewhat crude so burning black and tattooing everything will be more depending on the substance they use right so investigating a firearm uh, uh, clinical or autopsy scene visit whenever possible you have to take a detailed history then first try to determine the number of shots so that uh, differentiate entry and exit so that will help to determine that then the determine the range of fire direction of fire whenever possible and then determine the manner of it whether it is homicidal accidental and suicidal like suicidal has to be close usually close range or contact then the even the entry side should be within the reach of the uh, uh, the victim or accessible side like uh, if you see a uh, uh, entry wound on the back of the head it puts the case towards homicide rather than suicide though we cannot totally exclude uh, so remember that suicide they can be uh, fire a different some mechanism they can invent some mechanism to fire the gun uh, so that you might see a wound not compatible with a usual suicidal wound but then uh, that's why I told you that seeing the scene is better so that you have a good idea about what has happened. 
then also the determine the cause of death and some instances even the, the mechanisms. So, and also identifying the weapon and assailant, you might be able to give some facts or help to the investigating party. And also when it comes to atypical wound, uh, how to interpret and how to uh, formulate opinion. So circumstances, accidental, homicidal or suicidal. An accidental wound could occur anywhere in the body, but usually single because it's an accident, right? Maybe a, like a firing of a fully automatic weapon might have multiple wounds, but then you have to comply it with the existing uh, information. Suicidal wounds are also usually single, have to be at an accessible site, and usually weapon is held in hand in cadaveric spasm. Right, uh, the suicide sometimes muscle go into spasm. Weapon is still in the victim's hand, or even sometimes it be may be thrown away due to the sudden retraction of the arm. But anyway, the, you will be see the weapon around the body. On some occasion, uh, victim can use special mechanisms to fire the weapon. Right, you might sit on the um, chair, fix the gun on the table um, aiming at you and tie a uh, rope or a thread from the trigger to the, the door handle and you sit in front of the uh, gun and someone comes and open the door, pull in the thread, pull in the trigger which will fire. Right? So these things could happen. So that's why I told you uh, whenever possible scene investigation is a must and look for other associated injuries suggestive of violence before determining the manner because it might change your opinion uh, about the circumstances of death. Autopsy procedure, nothing different, but uh, scene visit as I told you when possible. Detailed examination including clothes and other personal items and the especially look for burning, blackening, and tattooing effect retaining on the clothes. And sometimes the blood drip marks and pattern might give you an idea of what the posture of the person at the time of injury and after injury. I initially, uh, just a second, uh, for I'm uh, running low battery, I just fixed the battery. Just give me Right. Sorry about that. I forgot to connect the charge. And uh, so, so gunshot residue from hands. I told you already about the victim or the assailant. X-ray in all cases, right? AP and lateral. I have told you why, what the reason is. And whenever you retrieve the bullet, bullet, you are not supposed to touch the bullet or pellet with metallic instruments that can damage it and government analysts might find it difficult to interpret. And you have to glove, use a, usually glove fingers to uh, retrieve the bullets. Uh, this is an x-ray showing multiple pellets, right? so of a shotgun injury, the AP detection, so you know that the, whip, uh, the shot has been fired from this direction, not the other. And sometimes some, I don't know whether I have a, no. Uh, sometimes rather than seeing this lead ball, sometimes it's, you have to see some, some opacity, but we call as lead snowstorm. Yeah, the, the vaporized lead metal uh, is carried with the bullet and you see like a cloud-like thing in the X-ray. Uh, again, you might, be able to get an idea about the direction from where it is coming, which is compatible with the direction of the fire. So autopsy procedure, continuing the photographs and diagrams before starting the uh, dissection and describe all the injuries in the detail, right? And always try to find the corresponding exit 
for a particular entity that will make your life easier to know in which direction, which shot has gone in which direction. And on internal dissection, try to trace the trajectory of the, the missile so that you have a given idea about the, uh, the possible injuries. Uh, send all garments to garment analysts when necessary so they will analyze the percent of uh, gun powder or metal or anything related to the firearm and hand over recovered bullets to the police so that they will uh, send it to the government list to um, analyze. And uh, careful dissection step by step, documentation of each steps and photograph whenever possible. Always try to find the lodged or retained bullets or pellets which will make the life of the life of most people easier. And try to determine the possibility of volitional activity as regard to any other fatal injuries whether the person was able to perform any acts on his own after sustaining the injury. Uh, the writing the cause of death, uh, we might have to be a little careful, uh, right? You have to give the immediate cause of death, like cerebral laceration, laceration of the heart. So that is the injury which caused death at that point of time and what it is due to. So the, the underlying cause is firearm injury or gunshot injury. But when you are writing it, you have to be a bit careful. If I say cerebral ascension due to the rifle firearm injury, then I am telling the courts that this is a rifle firearm. Right? But point is sometimes there are instances that smooth bow, they have used smooth bow weapons and but rifle cartridges. Right? So what the projectile which has gone from the smooth bow is a bullet, right? So if you uh, give that, just because you find a bullet, right? You give, uh, give the cause of death as cerebral laceration due to a rifle firearm, you might get it wrong, right? So when I write the cause of death, I consider these facts. And sometimes my cause of death is written like, Cerebral recession due to gunshot injury, not shotgun, gunshot. It could be a rifle firearm or a shotgun, right? Or else, when I find the bullet, if I find the bullet within the tissues, I write cerebral laceration due to a bullet injury without commenting on the uh, weapon, right? Because so that is when we are, I am extra cautious. But the most of the time, the uh, in uh, facts and details given to you about the weapon and what happened is correct. So therefore, if you don't have any doubts like that, it is all right. Writing, say, for example, cerebral decision due to a discharge from a rifle firearm or discharge from a smooth bow or shotgun. That is, will be fine. But whenever you have a doubt, you are not sure, it is better to stick to what you find. As you say, Cerebral laceration due to a bullet injury or cerebral laceration due to a gunshot injury, right? Make it general so you are out of trouble. And uh, whenever the different uh, opinion or facts submitted by the prosecution or the defense, you can always have the opportunity to consider it and explain it to the courts, right? So uh, writing the cause of death, I would think not twice, thrice, or even more before wording it, depending on the case, depending on the findings, and depending on whether I have a slightest doubt at all, right? So it has to be tailored to an uh, individual case, right? Uh, something about the injuries due to explosion. Uh, now, this is the objective, so just to say, tell you basic understanding about the different types of explosion and you know different kinds of injuries resulting from blast, scene investigation, determine the range and how to investigate and uh, cause of death, right? So explosion is a, uh, it's like a, it's a blast where exothermic chemical reaction that release high energy during a very short 
time period. So there are three primary fields of application of these effects like propellant, explosive and pyrotechnics. And propellant creates a high gas pressure for driving projectile like in a um, gun, right? So a bomb is also same thing could happen, right? Something uh, incorporated in the projectile incorporated in the, the, the bomb could be pushed uh, sideways. And it also creates a he heat wave and all sort of flame spreading outwards radially. So unlike a gun, when a bomb explodes and it spreads outwards radially or in all direction. And the, the instances where explosion occur, you can have high explosion used like bomb of different types. Maybe mechanical explosions like in factories, gas, oxygen cylinders. It com com um, commonly occurs as terrorist activities those days, right? And sometimes small bo bombs used in rivalries between opposing parties like hand grenades, uh, which are small scale bombs, small scale uh, uh, explosion. So therefore number of people involved or get injured or death will be less. And uh, sometimes like, like suicide bombing, strapping the bomb to the body um, by killing President Premadasa and Rajiv Gandhi, right? So they are target, targeting a particular person, but uh, definitely killing uh, others around, like uh, this Easter Day, Easter Sunday bombing also, same thing. It is not targeted for a particular person, right? But targeted to group. But a suicide bomber all can always start target a particular person they want to kill, but inadvertently the people, innocent people around will also get killed, right? So that is the nature of suicide bombing. And the blast, it's a like a pressure wave spreading out and as also heat wave spreading out and also flame, right? So it's spreading out radially in all direction and it depends on how far it spread and uh, whether people get involved uh, depending on the, the, the range and also the depending on the what is put in within the bond. You can have different types of flying missiles or projectile either originating from the bomb or the cover of the bomb or else due to the blast even the, the metal sub objects around the bomb could break into small pieces and to put uh, thrown outwards due to the pressure wave. And even uh, high explosive, even uh, surrounding structures could collapse, causing much damage. And injuries occur as a result of all these effects and severity of the injuries depend on the size or amount of explosion, proximity of the individual to the epicenter. Epicenter is the where the bomb is actually exploded. Amount and nature of the flying missiles and amount and degree of the damage caused to the surrounding structures and position, position of the victim at the time of the... Uh, just a second, pin. Uh, whether uh, we being collapsed or not. Right. Sorry. Right. Uh, injuries, contact or close range at the, the, if you are at the point of the Explosion, it can be even complete disruption or disintegration right at the epicenter. Most of the structures live or dead disintegrate and even uh, flying objects lying close. So this moment you see it after the explosion, there's nothing you can't find because it's simply disintegrated because you are at the epicenter of the explosion. Then you can have local disruption of the body especially in suicide bombers. And you know that someday you should strap around the, the waist. Sometimes the legs, feet and the head been thrown out and we can find an 
even identify who the um, suicide bomber is. Same thing happened in uh, Easter Day bombing as well. And when it's at a close range, can have injuries due to flying missiles, we have particularly martial threat, which are you have abrasion, discrete contusion, and lacerations. See, that's a characteristic feature of an explosion and can have dust tattoo, like dirt particle, um, discoloration of the, the skin, and also maybe small abrasions and internal injuries due to penetrating missiles. I don't have to describe because when you say penetrating missile, it depends on the, the, the part of the body where, the, where it enters. And burn and charring due to flame, particularly at the close range, singeing of hair, the burning of hair, even burn clothes can catch fire and also have flash burns. And this might particularly cause difficulty in identifying because it can uh, easily disfigure, especially in a charred body. Distant range, you are not in contact with the, the flame or the missiles, but uh, falling masonry, like you are in a building which collapses due to the, uh, the explosion. So it can have cuts, laceration, crush injuries, traumatic asphyxia, and even uh, poisonous gas, depending on whether that those things are available or present at the environment. And also uh, remember that electrocution, uh, even the falling masonry, live wires could be found on the floor. And even it is maybe a hazardous and you have to consider even uh, before visiting the scene uh, because uh, you might put your team in jeopardy if you don't consider these facts. The blast effects is a sound wave can traverse through the body and most disruptive effects are seen in tissue air solid or fluid interfaces, especially the lungs. Because if you take the lungs, chest cavity, you have the lung, right? And within the lung, you have air, tissue, and blood, right? So as a sound wave enters, this, the, especially the lung tissues, air, uh, tissue, and blood within the lung uh, oscillate at different level. So it's a feature of the density of the, so there's a lot of lung damage caused by the uh, traveling of this sound wave. And what might desire in a thing called blast lung in, uh, the bomb explosion and it may be the uh, only and the only fatal injury that you see in that particular person right so uh, so that cause internal injuries without any particular external injuries because it's the blast wave which has resulted so it can maybe blood in the chest cavity air in the chest cavity or even rupture of the liver rupture of middle ear an eardrum and even bladder intestine. So you can have uh, internal organ damage due to transmission of the last wave through the body. Investigation, magistrate usually has authority and scene visit as a team is a must. And also have to take necessary precaution to protect the scene, transport the bodies and sip in separate body bags and also the number and take photograph of the scene, the general scene, individual, before removal because it will be helpful you to um, restructure, reconstruct the event and also even having a sketch. And at the mock, depending on the number, you have to have a system of registering and accepting the bodies and then do the postmortem. And manner of death is usually no problem because you know that it is a uh, uh, bomb blast, but uh, for some it will be an accidental death. Some, especially in suicidal cases, it may be a homicide. And uh, with regard to the suicide bomber, I'm not sure whether to classify it as a suicide or not, right? But uh, the manner and the cause of the 
cause of death is usually much apparent and so sometimes depending on the the severity of damage you might not be able to uh, give a specific immediate cause like brain laceration and i think because the whole body is involved so even you are saying that the death due to a bomb explosion would be enough in most cases because uh, even the courts might not worry about the immediate cause of death and other thing when it is a known uh, bomb blast and there are multiple uh, deaths uh, so cause of death uh, immediate cause depending on the underlying injuries if possible when gross injuries are present this is difficult so even giving it as a very general cause as death due to bomb explosion would be more than enough and individual pm should be done as far as possible uh, because of the liabilities of claim uh, liabilities and claims like compensation insurance so identification and having a separate death uh, certificate is important for uh, further uh, i think that ends the lecture and uh, i think uh, if you have any queries it's a time to ask any questions any questions Hello. Sir, what are the questions that would be asked on this area? Ah, so, it, I mean, yeah, we'll, now, if, okay, now if, with regard to firearms and explosion, if a question is it, usually I will set it, right? Now, particularly, we will not ask about the different types of, or to describe different types of firearms, and ammunition particularly because that part of the lecture is i have done it uh, included it because then you have a the basic understanding then it's easy for you to uh, decide on the right so it's mainly uh it feels uh, with regard to the injuries right so when it comes to the injuries it's like say to just to check whether you know how to differentiate entry and exit uh some know something about the direction and uh, uh, range of fire and also some in some knowledge about the the atypical injuries which can cause right uh, and then the the, the routine uh, investigating procedure so if you go through the past questions right so we what we do is we give a small scenario and then ask question based on that but we will never ask about uh, to describe uh, ammunition different types of firearms and what is meant by rifling and other things because it's not necessary it is there that part is there for yeah, like a basic knowledge which will help you to build up your knowledge or the analytical power uh, because if i just tell you that this is a rifle in these are the features of rifle firearm then you don't know what is meant by rifle right so that part is for that purpose so usually we consider i consider about like knowing right how we know that whether to say it is a gunshot injury or not differentiate entries and exit then the range and direction and then the roughly the injuries and how to do investigate and something about cause of death and sometimes some special instances like if beverly i can ask what to understand or how would how would do analyze if you see internal beverly in the skull on right right side right so that is why now i have given that in detail 
right? So don't worry too much about the types of gun, semi-automatic, that thing, ammunition. It's, you have to go through that, but that is to, just for your basic knowledge, right? Uh, the question will be based on the clinical aspect. So it usually it is a, a scenario, given scenario, then few questions. Okay, thank you, sir. Are there any other question? Uh, if not, I can terminate the session. It's, I think we are a little tight ahead of the time. Okay, uh, shall I terminate the session then? In the session? Okay, so since there are no questions, I take it as don't have any more question. Probably I don't know whether that's a number. Right. So okay, thank you for joining and listening, and I will uh, send the recording. Uh, only thing is, I am for it whether I uh, I miss the recording on the initial stage. If so, I will do it again and. Uh, send the full recording, right? Okay then, thank you very much. So I will end the uh, session. Thank you. Thank you, sir.